Hello, my name is Lucas Granholm. I'm an assistant professor of theater arts at the University of Minnesota Morris. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how we have incorporated sustainability in the design program here at UMM, specifically in theater, and how it's actually positively impacted the learning environment of our students. So I'm gonna go through how we started, the impact of learning, and some examples that we've done. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Scavenging and using found objects and trying to do things as cheaply as possible is nothing new in theater. We're always beg borrowing or stealing items um, uh, with permission, of course, uh, and always repurposing what we already have so we can keep costs down. But the goal here is how can we scavenge, use reclaimed objects, things like that, to make our designs better and to incorporate this into our teaching environment to create stronger student designers. Where it started uh, is, of course, Jess Larson, a, a full professor at the University of Minnesota Morris uh, in studio art, started a course called Fashion Trashing. Uh, Fashion Trashing is a course that incorporated a lot of different uh, elements of design uh, and incorporated a lot of different students from across campus. Uh, this particular uh, photo series I'm gonna show from this course is one that Jess Larson and I co-taught together where students were tasked with creating outfits out of reclaimed materials. Uh, this one, as you can see here, <clears throat> made out of old onion bags, tin foil, cardboard, uh, over here we have recycled plastic bags, uh, an old dog food bag dress, which is one of my personal favorites. This student made a dress out of vintage maps. This one, uh, the student made out of uh, old trash bags with tin foil uh, jewelry. And same with this one with newspaper. And we started incorporating this into uh, sets and costume designs in our shows here. So this is from a production still of As You Like It, one of our first green productions, where this uh, coat was made out of used tea bags um, from, a, from a student uh, that sewed the fabric together and layered it in a really pleasing, effective manner. And this is where it began. In 2010, UMM produced a production of As You Like It, directed by uh, professor of theater, Ray Schultz and costumes designed by Jess Larson, where incor we incorporated uh, sustainable reclaimed products into all of the sets and costumes. And since this production, we have been slowly incorporating this into a lot of our productions, which you'll see throughout this slideshow. Uh, <clears throat> recently, we produced a production of A Midsummer Night's Dream with sustainable materials. Uh, uh, the Wonderful Wizard of Oz, uh, also with sustainable materials. And most recently, Alice at Wonderland, which was done during the pandemic, filmed uh, and streamed, but still incorporate a lot of reclaimed objects in the set. Utilizing reclaimed materials impacts student learning. How does it make students better designers? How does it... Uh, bode well for more effective designs from the students. Um, <clears throat> and one of the things that we started realizing was that utilizing green theater creates an inquiry-based learning environment where it empowers the students in the learning process. Uh, we're not funneling information into the students' minds, but rather we're giving them kind of a prompt and then putting them in the driver's seat to investigate uh, and play and try and reflect upon choices they've made. Now, we found that this was creating a better learning environment for students, especially in recent years where it's so easy to find what you need online just by Googling it and ordering it online, uh, which has somewhat impacted students' approach to design because it's so easy to find what we need as opposed to making do with what we have. So inquiry-based learning, especially in green theater, we found has four steps. Orientation being the first one. So discussing the project, the outcomes, the general vibe, right? Are we doing a comedy? Uh, what are we, who's the audience we're trying to reach? Uh, and what is the general feel of the production? Then we have conceptualization. 
or the director is creating a concept or the lens of which to view the play. We have a script, but now we want to contextualize it in a world. So what are we trying to create? The next is investigation. Explore the, the materials, the play, and really just play with the materials to try and figure out what you're trying to create. This process involves a lot of making piles and experimenting. And finally, conclusion, reflection, and build upon the skills we learned. With inquiry-based learning, the students are not wasting time by relearning things that they know already from like say a standard learning process where someone's standing in front of them talking. They're taking their existing knowledge and building upon that themselves with their own questions. So it really creates an environment where the students are really in control of the end product. And the impacts of inquiry-based learning have really, really helped uh, with our design program where it enhances the learning experience, uh, teaches students skills they need for jobs. So oftentimes if they're trying to find out uh, how to best paint an, an object or alter something or utilize new tools to really, really impact how they're designing and fosters creativity. Uh, helps students to think objectively, as opposed to thinking as a straight line, I need product A to look like X, versus uh, now we can have students experiment with materials and slowly start to create what they need to do to be needs to be done. Um, and allow students to take ownership, uh, as opposed to just simply purchasing an item, they're creating something, they own the process and the work. And it increases engagement with materials. Once again, um, utilizing found objects forces students to interact with materials as opposed to just ordering something online. So we ask questions, what do we need to create? Investigate where we can find materials, create something, discuss it, reflect, is this really what I'm saying? And just keeps going in a cyclical motion. So where do we start? How do we set students up for success with this? Do I just make piles of trash? Where do we find the items? How can we do this effectively? Uh, we have presented several times at various conferences about green theater and the tricks that we've learned. And I will say, as I go through this process, that green theater is not a quick, quick process. Uh, it takes time as opposed to uh, simply just getting what we need. There's a lot of scavenging. There's a lot of contemplative time of working with materials, things like that. And I'm going to walk through that. So the first thing we always ask students is we take objects uh, that we are very familiar with, aluminum cans, plastic bottles, and think about what is it and what could it be? What happens if I crush it? What happens if I twist it? What happens if we cut it here and fold it? Uh, it really forces students to think about how am I interacting with the materials and what am I trying to create by utilizing found objects. Oftentimes we will do this uh, in my studio with students where I'll give them a prompt uh, to make something and they have to go and look for these objects and make something, uh, which really helps them think objectively as opposed to the get it done attitude that we often see with uh, students. So the standard design process when we're thinking about theater uh, is it's a linear line. So we think about the concept. Well, how are we viewing this play? Is it Romeo and Juliet on the moon? Um, maybe not the strongest concept. I've seen it done. It's all right. <laughs> uh, but uh, the concept, discuss and collaborate. So with the design team with the student designers, if we have a student costume designer uh, or set designer, discuss and collaborate how can we create the world on stage. Then the students design with sketches, image research, uh, draft up some construction drawings, we build it, we have tech, we open, and we start the next show. Um, it's, it's a very defined process that we're very used to seeing in theater. But with green theater, um, <clears throat> the materials dictate the design rather than the design dictating the materials. So it makes it somewhat difficult uh, for a designer to think about uh, how a set's going to look before they know what they can find. Uh, and we'll go through some kind of tips and, and tricks for this. 
So the process of design green theater is a little bit more cyclical. It's, you know, we have a concept and a script, we discuss and collaborate, and then there is a lot of experimentation, scavenging, scavenging again, redesign, rebuild, open the show. Um, it's a lot of going back and thinking about and self-editing. Um, you know, oftentimes you, if you need to create something, a certain prop or a certain costume piece, uh, and you can't find the right object, you have to be able to pivot. Uh, a lot of us in theater in the recent years have become very accustomed to pivoting due to the global pandemic. So this is a skill that a lot of students have already kind of developed and now we've kind of heightened it because of the pandemic. Um, so tips for scavenging. Uh, <laughs> Uh, this obviously has changed a little bit due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, in, in past years, we've done more uh, food objects, water bottles, things like that, and we've kind of steered away from that now. Um, but when we scavenge, what we found is that we get far more community engagement when we do green theater uh, from our campus community and our city community because uh, it creates an investment from people that otherwise wouldn't be involved in our theater program. So uh, we make calls for weird collections. We never know what we're gonna find. Uh, put collection bins in the student center, as you can see in these photos. Uh, make piles and really make, uh, make friends with facilities because I guarantee you most campuses have some sort of stash of really interesting objects they don't quite wanna throw away. And this is actually one of ours on our Morris campus tucked away where we have surplus items. Specifically, we'll start with the Midsummer Night's Dream. Um, when we started designing Midsummer Night's Dream, which we did in 2016, we sought actively to make it as sustainable as, as possible. So the whole idea was that we wanted to pull everything from the recycling bins at the beginning of the show and put it back into the recycling bins. Uh, so we started looking at different artists that would that were incorporating uh, found objects into their design. So we were looking at a lot of Ant Antonin Gaudi images, uh, you like where wherein they used a lot of kind of natural type of lines with found objects. This is these are old wine bottles broken into the concrete, and looking at uh, various. Uh, architecture that he had designed. Uh, this is one of his most famous works uh, where there's a lot of um, naturalistic lighting that's manipulated to look very fiber optic and, and lush uh, with uh, still with a lot of natural lines and things like that. So we draw it really heavily from the work of Antonin Gaudi in this production as source material for our designs. And we found that utilizing source material for designs, giving students a, a, a kind of a base foundation of where we're kind of looking at really helps them elevate their work when utilizing found materials. So these are kind of our basic scenic renderings we had when we were starting the set. Um, like I said earlier, the materials really dictate the design versus the designer dictating what materials you're getting. So we had to uh, incorporate <clears throat> uh, different elements of, say, for instance, the court and the forest for Midsummer Night's Dream. So we knew generally the shapes we were going at, but we weren't sure how these were going to be built or what they were going to be made out of. Uh, here's some different images. Uh, we made chairs for this, uh, for this production made out of old uh, staircase spindles. Uh, this was our source image as well right here. Uh, the moon, which is a very important uh, element in Midsummer Night's Dream, was made out of old coffee cups from a found uh, a restaurant that was closing. And so these were just going to get thrown out. Uh, and you can see this coffee cup here for scale as well. This is quite large uh, moon that we created. Uh, this was actually a lounge that we made for this show that was made out of uh, cedar that was being thrown out by facilities. So always keeping an eye out for materials is a really prime example for this as well. And same with here, you can see this was uh, one of our original source images, the build, and then the final product here as well. So we were trying to use uh, two liter bottles and carpet tubes to create this kind of uh, Corinthian column look. 
uh, one of the things that we really incorporated uh, is a forest canopy for this, made out of uh, old packing material and water bottles. Um, there was an event on campus that day that was uh, every freshman student got a bottle of water and all of that bottle of water was collected in one recycling bin. So we quickly grabbed that one so we could work with uh, these types of materials because uh, <clears throat> we knew we wanted to use a lot of plastic bottles for the forest canopy and then lit, lit it with LED lighting to make it look a lot more magical and lush. Uh, same kind of thing. Here's some of our forest trees that we pulled directly from Gaudi. Uh, Gaudi's work incorporating these plastic bottles and uh, reclaimed cardboard to create these trees. And burlap facing as well. Oftentimes uh, theater sets have a lot of uh, sheet material, uh, plywood, luon, uh, masonite that gets used just for facing and then gets thrown out. So we made an active choice to, to do a lot of our masking and uh, dressing with reclaimed objects. So making friends with our local grocery store, uh, collecting burlap bags and creating these flowers out of uh, old folders, things like that. So school groups, people and, and local businesses were donating objects and investing in the show without them really even knowing it, which really create a lot more community engagement in our productions. And you can see here the court pillars again with the work lights on. Uh, some close-ups. Uh, <clears throat> we made some chandeliers out of old uh, children's bike parts as well. Uh, so it created a much more um, industrial look when the actors were in the court. And moving on to costumes, a lot of this uh, for these types of sets and, and design in general when we're using reclaimed materials is we wanted to create an aspect of double take. So for instance, this character, uh, this corset and jewelry is made out of old spoons um, that at first glance might not look like spoons, and, but upon closer inspection, uh, they are. <laughs> um, this allows for the audience to kind of be more invested in the production too and look at costumes more objectively as opposed to passively, uh, trying to figure out what it's actually made out of. Same with chain mail here as well. Uh, we also incorporated a lot of old VHS tape and embroidery, as you can see in this coat. Uh, this is all knit uh, or uh, festooned VHS tape in the costume pieces. And yes, you can knit VHS tape. We have done it. It's tricky, but it is doable. Same with <clears throat> this character. I believe this was Puck in our production of Midsummer Night's Dream, made out of all reclaimed denim. And this app um, applicator for the flower as well. So you can see using reclaimed objects can still make a really fully realized production. Uh, we never felt hindered by any of these elements uh, by just using reclaimed materials. Once again, you can see the chaise lounge that was built out of reclaimed lumber. Same here, some more close-ups of our costume. This is all with found or scavenged fabric. We did allow ourselves to get fabric from local thrift stores as well. So we were purchasing items, but we kept it to the rule of uh, second hand. There's a full stage shot with the company for midsummer. So again, here's a court scene with the columns. And here's the final image of us recycling the set back into the recycling bins that we received them in. So it was a very satisfactory moment for us where we were able to literally put the set back into where we came from because theater makes a lot of waste um, and a lot of unnecessary waste at that. So this was a really defining moment for us in this production where we were able to just simply re-recycle the set. Um, here's a few other uh, production stills. This is from a production of Hunting and Gathering we recently did where we try and mixed in reclaimed objects to our standard practice of uh, newer objects that we may have purchased for a show. So utilizing 
uh, these boxes in the background uh, to in kind of uh, reflect a, a city skyline. Um, one of our productions of uh, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, uh, we, re we mixed reclaimed objects and purchased objects. So with this, uh, there was a lot of puppetry in this particular production. So you can see uh, this Toto puppet is made out of old wicker baskets and burlap. Um, <clears throat> the corn stalks here are actually pot bottles and found P uh, PVC pipe. Uh, and the scarecrow as well is festooned with recycled uh, programs from our past productions uh, to incorporate as hay around his neck. Uh, same production of Wizard of Oz utilizing cardboard puppets. Uh, and same with uh, overhead projecting uh, shadow puppets for this production as well, utilizing uh, found or reclaimed paper from recycling bins. And you can see in this cut in this production still as well, we incorporate VHS tape again in the evil witch's costume, along with um, <clears throat> a lot of other found objects in the character's costume, such as uh, found uh, metal pieces in the Tin Man's costume as well. Once again, you can see some of the found objects uh, laid into the character's costumes. Most recently, uh, we did a production of uh, Alice at Wonderland, which is an, a modern adaptation of the story. Uh, this was produced during the COVID pandemic. Um, and so when we thought about how can we use reclaimed materials, we had to think a little differently. In the past, we've often had to uh, utilize uh, like recycled uh, pop bottles, things like that. And for this production, in order to remain COVID safe, uh, we chose to not incorporate those types of objects uh, as opposed to this set was more used with found objects. So <clears throat> things that we could pull from our stock and only pull from our stock uh, to incorporate as opposed to repurposing uh, objects we pulled out of the recycling bin. Um, <clears throat> so we were able to still kind of create and play with green theater uh, aspects of it with, without utilizing too much uh, new products. So you can see, for instance, that this, the, a lot of the costumes were made out of old found fabric um, uh, and found objects in our stock. And it actually allowed us to kind of dig deep into what we had and found things we didn't normally use. Uh, we did still incorporate found objects, for instance, Humpty Dumpty's wall here is made out of old packaging foam and this vine made from old Christmas lights and vintage fabric. Uh, same with uh, the caterpillar, we utilizing old HVAC tubes, found fabric and buckets to create uh, the mushroom field as well as their tail uh, was made out of old HVAC tube as well. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. My email is located right here, along with my website where my online portfolio is located. If you have any questions about how we incorporated this, what kind of protocols did we incorporate, how did we even find objects or pick plays, please reach out to me. And I would love to answer any questions. Thank you so much.